Today on Shop Nation, we give a serious facelift to my wood storage area by creating a swinging tool wall, tool wall, get it? That effectively doubles my wall area so I can still use it to store wood, but also store some tools. What's up everybody, welcome back for another project. I'm Travis with Shop Nation. Today I'm gonna to be doing a little bit of a combo project, half tool wall, half wood storage. Now I've never seen anybody do this specifically, but I think it's a great use of space, especially in that little corner where I tend to store my wood. Now the truth is it's a very narrow area, but also a lot of wall space that I'm giving up just storing wood. So this is kind of my take on maximizing that space by still using it to store my wood, but creating a smaller false wall to both contain that wood and also to store things on. Now I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of tool walls or cleats on walls, things like that. I just prefer my stuff away. However, I think this is a good compromise for this space specifically, and who knows, maybe I'll like tool walls after this. So I've got my design modeled up in Fusion 360, and the first thing I need to do is cut down all of my wood. I've designed this so you can make it from a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood, along with a couple one by fours and one by threes. So the first thing we need to do is trim all of our pieces to size, and that means make some sawdust. Okay, so I know I said from a single piece of plywood, but we actually need a scrap long strip of three quarter inch plywood to build this wall. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of the cleats ahead of time. Remember that keeping setups like this to a minimum helps with both efficiency and accuracy. These supports on the backside add a little strength to the wall, but are mainly used to secure the outer trim that we're going to add later. Did I mention how great cordless brad nailers are? Game changer! Now laying out the spacing of all the cleats on the front of the wall, in this design they're 8 inches apart. To be honest, I have no idea if this is the right spacing, but it looks right. So I made a mistake, and it's a great example of why I should be following plans, not just trying to wing it. Because on one side of this wall, there's a little right angle wall that goes along next to it, I left a gap on one side for that small L to accept the other piece as I put it together. But I assembled it the other way. So, if you're gonna build your own, I recommend you follow the plans, which I have available, or just don't be a dumbass. That too. God. Here I'm adding some ripped down 1x3s that will act as the exterior trim that hides all of the plywood edges. This little gap in the trim is to accept the shorter 90 degree wall that we're going to add later. Alright, so it's the next day, the wall panel assembly has had a chance to dry, now it's time to make the hinges. Alright, so basically the way these hinges are going to work is I'm going to use these big half inch, eight inch long bolts 
that are going to sandwich between these pieces which are going to be mounted to the board which is mounted to the wall and then there'll be a center section which obviously passes through the bolt as well and we'll use these big washers here to separate the wood in all the joints that should give me a really strong hinge we'll see So in hindsight, I probably would have ripped these 2x4s down to remove the curved edges left from the mill, but it'll work either way. These plates give the hinges a surprising amount of strength. Now to mount the hinge assembly to the wall, you definitely want to tie into a stud. Since I didn't have a stud exactly where I needed it, I made up these little boards to bridge two adjacent studs that I could then tie into. For the inner hinges, I had some laminated oak blocks laying around that I chose to use. Then it's just a matter of placing them the same distance as the outer hinge assembly mounted to the wall. You can do a little bit of shimming with washers if you need to. Now to quickly knock out the small 90 degree wall, this is where you'll need that scrap of 3 quarter inch plywood. Again, if I were to be following the plans, this would be a lot cleaner. But, I made it work. Another mistake here, pay no attention. All right, so what do you think? I think it's pretty damn cool. So after building this, I realized that it's not necessarily just a play for wood storage. It's really a cool way to effectively double your wall space anywhere in your shop. Now I'm still electing to store my wood behind the tool wall, but I wanted to propose another option if this isn't an option for you. The area above your garage door is an excellent place to store big pieces of plywood like this. Yeah, they're a little harder to get up and down, but it's totally out of the way and you're not gonna use that space for anything else. Check the links below for some racks that are meant for that. It felt really good to get back in the shop and actually build a project. I was a little rusty, made a couple mistakes, but 
if you follow the plans, you shouldn't make the same mistakes. By the way, the plans are customizable based on the depth that you want. So in my case, my hinge is about eight inches off the wall, so I can store about four pieces of plywood pretty comfortably. But if you want a deeper or shallower version, you can easily modify the dimensions in the plans. The one thing I was a little unsure of is how the hinges were gonna work out, but they are rock solid. So if you're worried about a lot of weight cantilevered on the end of that hinge, there is zero play in those things. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe to see a lot more projects just like this. If you like the video, please give me a like. It really helps. I'd really like to know what you guys think about this project. I think it turned out really cool. I am now a fan of tool walls. Yes, I said it. I think they're cool. I actually kind of like the flexibility of being able to adapt it to whatever I want. So down the road, if I get a whole lot more clamps, I can make this purely just clamp storage. The world is my oyster. So I will do a subscriber update. As of shooting this video, we're at 53,000, 53, 100, and 27 subscribers. That's pretty cool. Every time I refresh it and see that number, I still think it's cool. But we got tons more growing to go. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next project. And as always, continue to pursue shop greatness.